A personal experience. I was in Boston many years ago, and I had to go to New York City that same night. And in order to save some time, I took that miraculous invention of the human brain, the airplane, in order to shorten and hasten the time of my journey. And on a very beautiful day, I went up in this four-engine plane, and after a pleasant 55 minutes in the air, we were about to land in New York City, when the hostess walked in, she said, you know, <laughs> we can't land in New York. <laughs> the fog has set in. <laughs> and we shall try and land in Boston. And, and so she gave us some chiclets, and we, we flew back to Boston. And there we attempted to land, and she came in, she says, you know we can't land in Boston either. <laughs> the fog is set in as well in Boston, and we'll try New York again. <laughs> and so she gave us some buckets, and, we flew back to New York City, and again we tried to land. She came and says, you know, we can't land anywhere. <laughs> and so she gave us a massage, and we started to fly and fly and fly. By this uh, time, everybody in the plane was rather hysterical, like a great B uh, Hollywood movie, or the usual great television show. And I myself was kind of sad. I was reviewing my life. <laughs> my appearance in this program, my friendship with Suskind. Uh, however, I got a good grip on myself, and we started to fly and fly and fly, and suddenly a hole in the fog opened up. The plane shot through it, and we landed in Concord, New Hampshire. <laughs> and I got to New York City two days later, having saved all that time. <laughs> but the interesting part of the story is that the hysteria of the passengers was best expressed not by the passengers themselves, per se, but by this huge inanimate object, the lost airplane, which really mirrored and reflected the hysteria of the passengers. By the way, this number bears the seal of approving, approval of Good Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> the lost airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>